So, good morning. How is everybody? Good? Smiley, beautiful weather, rainy. But we need rain because of the new flowers and the uh, spring. Get in here. I know there is about five or six people more, but they are busy doing this stuff. How are you? So, by the way, if you want to put a note on your uh, calendar, I am developing a new uh, new uh, course for next month. May 23rd is power of sales. Most of us we take it uh, in the in the one of the segments, I think, but uh, we forget because we don't practice on it. And I never want to practice power of sales, but uh, the market is kind of. There are a few more than before. You know, it, it used to be you could hardly see any power of sales. Now we are getting more and more. Good morning. So um, it's it's better that uh, we are on top of things, and uh, you know, if you don't know exactly what happens uh, when you have a power of sales listing. When you are uh, dealing with a bank or mortgage broker and you give them business, once in a while they give you a kickback by giving you a power of sale because they know which house is going to be. You know, they have uh, they have information before anybody else. So right now we have about five or six power of sales listing right now in our office. You know, and most of them are given to the agents by the bank representative. Hello. Hi. I am expecting a call from a lawyer, so uh, if on my if I answer, uh, I usually don't answer phones when I'm speaking, but uh, today there is a case that is going to call me. I put it on law. Anyway, so power of sales are a totally different case. Um, if, you, if you want to listen a little more about it, I worked with them for almost 10 years. And I was a property manager, a sole broker. So they, they, they did differently than regular vendors or sellers. Okay, the bank does not uh, nothing has to do with the, how you're selling regularly. So if you're interested, Mark, uh, I think it's May 23rd Wednesday. It's going to be up. <clears throat> Today, we didn't want to name the name of the course questions and answers because that doesn't look very uh, you know, informative. But actually, maybe half an hour after, I'm going to ask if you have any questions in general about anything, and then if I can answer. But within the first half an hour, we'll go over some case studies with Rico. There are a lot of uh, punishments lately, especially I get notices. And uh, I'll give you some examples that what should be done or not. And then we take it from there. Now, first of all, do we all know that Terry on warranty is changed? Before it was maximum of 60,000 on non condominium. Do you know the changes? Anybody knows anything? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. to last uh, December, non condominium, that's the key word, they were guaranteed by Terry on warranty if you bought a property from a builder, whether $10 million or $600,000 because the builders, you pay to the builders directly. Okay? They take the money to use it. If they have 10 houses, 20 houses, they take your money and then they use it. They are free to do that. So your money was guaranteed up to $60,000. Uh, if you pay $100,000 and the builder went bankrupt or $200,000 in some cases, you would only be guaranteed from Terrian up to $60,000. Now that amount is not changed, maximum of 10% of $100,000. So just that you know, if you buy a property of $1 million and he requests 10% or 15%, let's say, which is $150,000, you're guaranteed up to $100,000. 60 is became $100,000. Condominium properties, no changes because you don't pay to the builder. You pay to the builder's lawyer which is a trust account, and it's a lot more than 50 or 60 or 100,000. In some cases, you pay, uh, you know, depending on the price, 20% uh, of the sale price, it could be two, three hundred thousand dollars depending, but mm -hmm. that doesn't go to the builder. You mean resale, right? But, no, resale. not resale, it's a brand new. 
Yeah, resale, it goes to the brokerage. You know, resale houses or condos, it goes to the brokerage, but brand new condos are safer because there is a lawyer holding the deposit. So that is a trust account, and you're not supposed to touch that trust account. Even though once in a while, every five, ten years, we hear that the lawyer got the money and is running out, but this once in a while. But 90% of the time, 99% of the time, your money is safer if the condo purchases because it's been held in the trust account. But with private builders or subdivision builders, they hold the money. You pay it directly to the builder. So if the builder is somebody known like Matami, Monarch, nothing to worry about. If it's somebody overnight you became a builder, you gotta be careful if he has anything, you know, in his uh, portfolio that we can trust. But it's a hundred thousand dollar now. I will give you some form numbers and put them down and just try to print them or uh, I can make four copies later on. Form number 280. Because most cases that I'm going to talk about today, uh, it's all related to this form. And form number 108. <coughs> the form number one. Uh, sorry, 280. It's a brand new form. It came up uh, this year, 2018. We didn't have it last year, right? And it's a very practical and useful form. I think we should study on it, take it, print it, and then look at it. Seller service form checklist. It says residential, okay? Everything we are looking at today is residential, by the way. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections. It was something like this. Okay, I'll make a copy right now. We are only 10 people. I'll give you one. Um, it, it gives you all the information and what you need with the seller from top to the bottom, from first day until the closing. I think it's very helpful because there are check marks what you do, what you're supposed to do, what you're missing, anything that has been forgotten is all in here. Okay, I'm going to give it to the printing uh, uh, inside and they give us a copy to go over it. For example, uh, working with a realtor, this thing agreement, individual identification information, which is the thin track. You do all this the first day when you are doing your listing, I think it's a lot easier than going middle of the listing and say, oh, I forgot the thin track, we need that. I think it's the best time is when you're getting your listing. Everybody is fresh, everybody is happy, everybody is trying to do their best. So there is no problem. You go after 15 days, maybe you have a little bit of issue, the showings didn't go well, or somebody forgot the lights, somebody forget the door open, the cat is lost in the house, so they will always be different atmosphere after a while, okay? So the best time is the first uh, meeting, or when you're getting to this thing. Confirmation of cooperation and representation, agreement of purchase and sale, trade record, these are some extra stuff that you don't need. Waivers, amendment, notice of fulfillment, mutual release, registering disclosure, and then seller property information statement. These are not mandatory, but some people use it. And seller discrete, uh, directions, residential market uh, guide, mortgage verification. So all these things are useful stuff. Some of them, you're never going to need it, but it's there. If the house that you're listing, you need one of this, then you don't forget what was that, because it's given to you, OK? Not every house, not every listing is going to be identical. It's like no house is alike, no people are alike unless you are born to it. You know, obviously you are not going to need every paper on every house, but depending who you are working with, if there is a mortgage to be canceled, discharged, if there is a mortgage to be assumed, it's all in here. Because mortgage verification, we don't use it anymore because everybody says purchase it for a brand new financing. In some cases, you don't have to. If there is no, if there is a lot of penalty by, by the seller discharging that mortgage, why not have the purchaser to assume it if it's if it's assumable or portable? Why not have the seller to take it to where it's going? So these are all in here, and unless the seller gives you something in writing, the bank will not talk to you, obviously, right? So that's uh, how it works. Okay, this is one, and one of the most important when you are dealing again with the seller, 
is the form number 108. This has been revised a couple of times. Entry access to property seller's acknowledgement. Now, there are three sections in here. Most of the cases that I'm going to talk today in here from RICO, and I don't want to share this with you because we have two agents from this office. They are charged, okay? And they are not confidential. You can go on RICO, but I don't want to mention their name. One of them is a $7,000. It's right here. And the other one is $4,000 by not complying with RICO rules and regulations. And the commission they made was a lot less than that. What is a rental action? When you make thousand dollars and pay seven thousand or four thousand in this case, it hurts more because if you make twenty thousand and they charge you four, you still have sixteen thousand dollars. But when you are making fifteen thousand and they charge you twenty, then you're losing money, not making money. And one of them is uh, that. How are you? Where is the case? Hey. What is the case? What is the case? It's one of the related to this. Now, this three session. When you're getting a listing, there is 90% of the time, there will be an offer coming in, and it will be conditional on two or three things. One is inspection, and another one is a mortgage financing, one probably voters approval, and the last one if it's a condominium, it's the status certificate. Okay? Some of these things you don't need to worry about it. Voters approval is a private issue between the buyer and his lawyer. So he goes to his lawyer and the offer gets approved and the condition is made. The status certificate is seller arranges to get one and pay for the for it, and then the buyer's lawyer gets it and approve it and again it's done. There is nothing to worry. But there are two items there. That is one of them is uh, condition of financing and the other one inspection. Now what happens in these two conditions? Usually the bank approve someone and until the closing date or, or a day before or a week before nobody even calls to make an appraisal that's the worst thing number one we have to make sure that within our condition if it's in our power and we have a purchaser that is not 100 percent solid to get the appraiser to the property before you remove the condition especially these days with this new mortgage rule you don't want to hold your appraisal until the last week. If there is any issue in your application, in your buyer's application, now the sellers are the victim in this case because if the, the buyer's uh, bank pulls the flag, the deal won't close. So everybody is losing in this case, okay? Maybe the, buyer, the sellers bought something else and maybe the buyers didn't know that there was gonna be an issue. Some mortgage brokers create, they are creative. They start putting some numbers and change the stuff, you know? I don't wanna discuss that in here, but you got to be careful who you are working with, which mortgage company or broker you're working with. There has to be trustful person. Lately, I know, Jack knows, Vivian knows in this office, and other offices, I don't know. We lost, within the last three months, maybe 10 deals. And that was all the last week of the closing. Because something is modified in the application. And they say to the buyer, if you do this, you can guarantee a mortgage. The buyer changes it. The banks are more smart. They are more active now than 10 years ago or five years ago. They check everything the last week. If there was anything modified or, or not correct, they can put the plan the last day that you cannot do it. Okay? Sometimes the lawyers are smart. They get an extension a couple of days. There is a private funds. Uh, there are uh, other remedies available to uh, the buyers can get uh, maybe through a secondary deal lending, you know, paying 6% whatever not to lose their high deposit but it's not very uh, pleasant to have all this real estate so if your buyer is working with 5 10 15 percent down payment or 20 even i would like to have the inspector or the appraisal go to the property within that period of time because you sell a property 800,000 because this is 899 859 829 is sold for 800 how do you know in front of the bank or in, in the eyes of the bank that property is going to appraise 800000 And you have a buyer with 20% down payment, $200,000. You think that's enough. If the property gets appraised seven fifty, they need $50,000 more. Besides everything else. Because you think that property was worth eight hundred, dollars They think this property is only worth seven fifty, So you are short 50000 
If the down payment is 30%, I don't see a problem because there is enough to cover $100,000 more or $80,000 more. But if the down payment is only 15, 20%, that could create a big problem on closing. Now, who are you going to get somebody to give your buyer $50,000 on the last day? Very difficult. So if the appraisal is done ahead of time and it's approved, if it's less, you don't move the condition. If the buyer doesn't have that luxury, don't don't take the condition out, don't leave it. If there is enough, then the appraiser is going to say, yeah, the property qualifies, and then nothing to worry about it. They cannot change their mind on the closing debt unless the application was done in not good faith. Okay, that's another. Thing. So, what are these uh, parties? Yes. Do you know any cases that have been uh, the bank have been appraised in during the many cases, not any, many. Yeah. Most of the cases is the appraiser goes the last week or the last couple of days and says the property is not for the buyer doesn't have money. Some cases, very minimal, the property gets appraised, but the application was purged. It wasn't high. It was not done in good faith, okay? Either the mortgage broker was playing with it, or the buyer put different numbers. You make 100,000 a year, you put 150. You think nobody gonna check that. Or your wife doesn't work, you show her part-time, uh, she is earning 40, 50,000 a year, then they wanna prove. Or you say, I have a bank uh, stops, you know, my monthly or weekly payments are so much, they ask three months, you cannot prove it. So even though the property got upgraded, you are not uploaded. And it happens. Okay. Hey. Sorry. Pardon? So there, there's a lot of cases here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The bank oh, yeah. Is. The bank set up. And they don't care. You know what? You cannot even complain because they say you are the one you are lying, not us. So we should we should ask the mortgage brokers to do this. Don't deal with anybody that uh, it creates like a miracle. There is no such thing. Okay. If you see somebody is creating miracle and they say, oh, I did this, I did that, the guy didn't have down payment, I found it, there is always something behind it, okay? Work with someone that the mortgage broker has a good name and most of his deals are closed, check it out. Banks are always 100%, but they are not as flexible as the different uh, subways mortgage brokers or private mortgage brokers. But when you go to a bank and they approve you for that mortgage, you are 99.9% .9 guaranteed. Okay, but private mortgage brokers, I can, I don't, I'm not going to say that they are all the same, but there are some very good, helpful, honest people, but there are some on the other end, not 100% honest. Right, right. Okay, so if I'm looking at the buyer and I've asked, you know, the ABC, yes, I have, you know, I've been pre-approved, I went to my bank, I have my hearings to go, then I should see if that should be enough. No. The pre approval is made nothing. I can make a phone call right now in front of you and give my name to a mortgage, uh, uh, not a broker, but bank uh, specialist. Give my name and last name and say that I want to buy a million dollar home. She's going to say, I need a pre approval. She's going to ask me a few questions. Few. Uh, do you work? Yes. How old are you? So many years, whatever it is. And I will marry your wife knows all these things. Now she is asking me, I'm answering. She has no way of knowing what I am saying. Is the truth or is uh, the is the truth or the extra I'm exaggerating? Okay? She doesn't know. And then she's gonna say, uh, how much money do you make? I say hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, whatever you get. And I'm looking for a property. She will do some calculations there. How are you married? Nice to see you. So um She's going to do some calculations there. And then at the end, she's going to say, well, I think you are safe for up to a million dollars with 20% down. Do you have 20% down? Yes, I do. That's it. Now I am pre approved. She can even send me that paper by fax or by email. Because it's based on the information you provided to the bank employee. And there are so many conditions under that. Don't don't kid yourself. It's not like, oh, that's it, I have a paper, I'm free, I'm good, I'm okay. No. It says the information was given as per uh, the client, you know. And there will be appraisal condition in there. There will be pre-qualification, not pre-qualification, but real qualification with your uh, payment uh, letters and stuff. And a credit bureau. They didn't even do credit bureau. 
Now, maybe all of the above is correct, but you have a credit bureau of 400. You have a bankruptcy. You think they're going to honor that? No. You got to have minimum of 650 with equity funds, up to the 680, but that's the lowest, in order to get the mortgage that you're looking for. So three approvals are good, but not secure. It's not the best. So in other words, the, any three approvals you go with that, it can be a, it could create a problem. You don't have to depend on the Unless the conditions are on the one thing, appraisal or CMC. This is all that's different because that means everything else is done okay, just the appraisal. And I would definitely recommend it in the five days. If they refuse it, then if they say we don't have enough, you, you're going to pay for the appraisal anyway. You can, you can ask, can I get my own appraisal done? With a dependent, like qualified company. Sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no, you have to go with them. Anyway, the issue is this. When there is less moment uh, appraisals, and this paper is not initialed or signed by the by the seller, now there could be an issue. Seller says, I don't want anybody in my property. You have two visits or three visits within a two month period. If you put those two visits, those are for your buyers or the buyer agent's buyers, you are on the listing side, and they use that. Now, seller has no obligation to open the door to anybody else. You have to resist, you use your two reasons. If this paper is signed and it's in the offer, we put a clause that the seller nearby agrees that uh, before closing there could be a bank appraisal besides the two visits or three visits of the buyer. Okay, if I am on the buyer side, I will always protect by putting that. So if they agree, that's okay. That this paper serves for two different reasons. If the offer is saying that you are allowed to go with your appraisal and your uh, inspection is within five days. Now, there are circles here. One of them, for the conditions in there, listing brokerage representative, does she want you there or you don't have to be there? This is very critical because some of the fines that Rico is writing down here is all related to this. Number two, cooperative brokerage representative, does he have to be there or not? Or the seller consents to, to neither the listing broker representative or the corporate representative represented being present during the entry. Now, entry means not only one thing, everything. Every time you enter that property, that is valid. That means visits. You don't want to have buyer going directly to the seller's house without any representative. One case, the study, is $5,000 because they give the buyer the lockbox code to enter the property and seller was involved and while the buyer was inside before the closing sellers come in and say who are you i am the buyer because most of the time buyers don't meet the seller during the day you show the property there is no one home at night you make an offer there is uh, you know the seller home but the buyer is not with you who are you i am the buyer how did you get it the uh, agent gave me you know is it a fair deal it's a big Red mark. Okay, so if, if if your buyer is going to go to see the property, you must be with him. You cannot send him five minutes before and he opens the door and you meet him five minutes after with your copy. You cannot work like that. You gotta be there before. You open the door and you take him in. If the seller says every time the buyer agent is coming here and they're going to show the property door to you, I want you to be here. Don't forget, we get paid by the seller. The commission issue is a private issue. Whether you're charging 4% or 5%, that's your choice. If you cannot negotiate your commission to 4.5 to 5, and you are working at 4 or 3.5 in some cases, you cannot say, I'm only making 1%. Why should I be there all the time? That's your problem, not the seller, not the other broker. If the seller is saying, I want you to be here, even if you are working free, you have to be there. The, 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 the RICO does not say if you are getting less money, it's okay. You can go late or you don't go at all. There is no such rule. Now, most cases, that's the answer. Well, I wasn't making enough money. Why should I be there all the time? It's half an hour drive. Well, don't take the listing. <laughs> you know, if you don't want to drive to, let's say, Mississauga, nobody forced you. They called you, or you were door knocking, or you, you were somehow visiting somebody, next door neighbor wants to this. 
then you say, this is not my area. I'm going to have somebody else to work with you. Or they force you to make it three and a half. Don't take it. You say, my minimum wage is four percent or four and a half or five. We have agency, believe it or not. They don't get anything less than five percent. We have agency, they don't get nothing less than four and a half percent. They have a escape principle. They say, instead of working with 20 people every year, I work with 10 people every year. Instead of working with 10 sellers, 20 sellers, I work with 10. But I make the same money by working with them. I believe that and I support them. Okay? But when you are new in the business, you want to grab anything you can, that's the case. You can lower your standard. Right? I'm not suggesting that everybody should lose anything or not. That's fine. So the case is this you cannot let the buyer in with any lock box called alone. Or if the seller is demanding that you're going to be there, every time there is a showing or entry, you have to be. If you don't like it, don't be. What about the appraisal? That's coming. That's coming. Exactly. So that's number one. Number two is the inspection. There is a three hour inspection. Why would you have someone going there and it's your listing to enter the property, fiddle around? in the attic, in the basement, measuring this, measuring that, and you are listening again and you are not there. I don't care whether the seller said, I want you to be here or not. I would be there regardless. I've seen so many agents, buyer agents, they enter the property and the seller relation is not there. That's not even right. That's not right. If you have a listing, you have, you are the, like, you are managing that listing. You are, you are, uh, you are on top of it. You gotta be there to see if there is anything that you can help the inspector with, or if there is anything you can collect any information. If they're gonna back out of the deal, there are two ways of writing conditions. Do we know both of them? Inspection conditions. Do we know both? Everybody knows both. What is one is different than the other? Do we know that? One is a buyer's condition. One is a seller's condition. Even though the buyer is putting in. On a dual agency, which one do you use? There are two of them in our cheat sheet. One is full satisfaction of the buyer. If they see a hair crack, they say, I don't want this house, there is a crack in here. The other one, you cannot change your mind. It says, at the seller's discretion, if that is going to be fixed, you are stuck with it. Okay? So the inspector is going to go there and you leave your uh, buyer agent with the buyer. You are not there, the sellers are not there. You have to be there to see is there something that is going to affect the sale of the property? Even these people give up. Why? Because if, that, if these people that they are showing it now, it's expecting it, if they say you don't want it anymore, there are issues with the house. So, what are those issues? You want to know. So, for the next round, at least you are prepared. You can tell the seller that this is. They give up because of this, because of that, because of the other reason. Now, either we should fix it before we, you know, get another offer because this is going to repeat itself. Or you don't want to fix it and you're going to have this problem all the time. So I think it's a very good idea to do that. But do we have to disclose to the buyer's agent that we as a seller agent will be there? No, that no, they have not nothing to do with it. That's your listing. You came with there half an hour before. Get your papers, sit down, welcome them. You can, you, you should be there during the inspection. Don't follow anybody. You can tell the inspector if you need anything, I'm here. You know, once in a while, see a monitor. You know, show yourself that you are present. But not being there is the worst thing because they are all by themselves. You don't know what the hell is going on. Maybe they have questions about the house because you know. It could be something that you sold this house than 10 years ago. Now you're already selling it back again, right? So I think it's a good idea. And specifically if the seller demands it. But for me, I have to do that. It doesn't matter. Now, Morgan, yes, you have a question. Um, is it okay if the seller asks for uh, inspector to come before? It's okay, but it's a private and the buyer is paying for it. They don't have to do this. Unless. So it's not a no, unless. The offer is prepared in a way that, in the event the buyer is not going to remove the condition, the seller demands a copy of it because there has to be a reason, right? If the house is 100 out of 100, there is no house like that. I haven't seen one yet. 
But if there is one and the buyer was playing game, he put two offers or three offers on three different properties, which I hate to even talk about it, okay? But most of us is even trying that now. That's a new gimmick. Anyways, so if you are putting three offers on different, whichever comes first, price reduction, roof repair or something, and then you go with that, and it's not in the offer, the seller cannot demand. Then he has to sign the mature release. But if the offer has a paragraph indicating that in the event the condition is not removed and they want a mature release, you need a copy of the thing that they have to give. Whether it's any good or not, even there is a small stuff that is written in a way that, that is full satisfaction, nothing you can do. But they can have a copy. Any other questions? Yes. I have to say. You have a question. Yeah. This appraisal is being done by the buyer's mortgage company. Mm -hmm. They were obligated to share the information like buyer of the listing agent. The agreement is there. Like we said, you can find the fact. Especially the different appraisal is different. The inspection is within the first five days of your offer, conditional. Appraisal, I prefer that it's done within the five days that we have. But sometimes they don't agree with that the length. That's that's the problem. They leave it for the end, okay, before closing. But appraisal don't care about the cracks, appraisal don't care about other issues. Of course, if the house is falling apart, then it's going to be deduction, right? If you have a roof that it needs to be changed, if you have a basement with full of water or dead dampness, appraisal will look at that. Obviously, it's going to say the house is worth eight hundred, but there's thirty thousand dollars to be spent to make it livable so that thirty thousand will be working against the buyer okay but appraisers don't care if there is a crack or not small crack or big crack they, they are not in there for that they just want to know if the house is okay within that let's say two two miles uh, parameter or circle uh, uh you know appraised value is it okay or not if they lending you eight hundred thousand dollars or seven hundred thousand dollars is that going to be okay for them or Tomorrow, the price is not going to be supporting the upgrade fund. So that's what they are. And like you say, you're saying that there are uh, not conditions you can put in, that the buyer has to produce a, a copy of the condition. If that upgrade, if that inspection says the house is 100, perfect. Then there's a case. Right? Then yeah. they can. Then there is a case that the seller can hold the buyer responsible for everything up. Obviously, there are different remedies for the buyer, for the mortgage, for example. It's a private issue. Uh, he said, I went to the bank, I didn't get approved, you know, and yeah. they still can get the money, but if it's only one condition, and if it, it becomes 100 out of 100, it's it's not, yes, yeah. please, because then there's the yeah. Commercial appraisers are different with the residential? Oh, yeah, yeah, totally yeah. different, yeah. Commercial appraisers don't do residential, or they may, but uh, they, they, they can, but the residential appraisal, they can. You need a higher degree. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine a $20 million plaza with a $800,000 home? You, you need extra knowledge, or there are different ways of appraising properties. You know, it, 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 the, 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 the residential appraisal, they use competitive market analysis, but the commercial one, they use the cost approach, income approach. There are a lot of. Do we have any in this office? Yeah, but we don't have it in this office. But I, if you need it, I can get somebody to give you a name. So on the inspection it says there is a chichi, there is seller, and some buyers involved. I never noticed the seller. So my question is, Brenda putting in the sellers as a condition. I mean the clause. I never noticed that. You never noticed it. Okay. What I used to do when I was active. Okay. And I still do if I'm dealing with the uh, relatives or friends that they need to buy, or if I need to discuss. If an offer comes in, I used to have uh, both of them. If I'm representing the buyer under buyer agency agreement, that's a keyword, ERA, I use the buyer's uh, inspection condition because I have a buyer agency agreement. Okay? If I am on both sides, representing buyer and the seller as a client, then I use the seller's condition, right? The, regardless, that's the way it should be. Now, if I am on the seller's side and an offer comes in from uh, another company, I must use the seller's condition. I don't care if they're going to say, no, you take that out, 
the Aragora uh, come back with the offer. Then don't come back with the offer. I would convince my seller that this is a trap. Like any aircraft, you can change your mind. You're taking your property off the market for five days, seven days with the weekend. And then all of a sudden, oh, we don't want it because um, it's been one for a little bit of a spider. There was a spider bed. You know, hello. So it's very simple like that. Okay. So I, what I used to do is that I used to have a schedule A ready with the seller's condition. So if there is one that coming in, okay, most agents use baby sellers anyway. I used to get rid of that initial by the seller and put the new schedule A for the buyer to use. It's, you should have it in your briefcase anytime you have a listing ready to go. That's the easiest way. So, do you recommend as a seller uh, agent you can add the schedule on the MLS? No, I don't recommend that. I would have it with me. Then you are scaring people like with so many. I would have it with me. Or when the offer comes in by email or by fax, you take it, do the whatever you have to do with your seller. Change anything you want, put the new schedule there and send it. They will appreciate, the other agent will appreciate actually, because if he puts it in the beginning, then the lawyers are involved sometimes. They say, why your agent put this in the beginning? But if you change it, he may even like you because he's going to say, now nah, I'm more safe. I'm going to get my money. You know what I'm saying? So this way, there is a more guarantee that the deal is going to go through. All right? So inspection is done. Now we are talking about the mortgage appraisal. If you cannot get your mortgage appraisal, make sure that this this is this is followed up because if the seller says I want somebody and you have you have to have in the offer if it's a mortgage condition you have to have in the offer that seller agrees and acknowledges that before the closing and in addition to the two visits or three visits of my buyer visit they will allow the the bank appraiser to enter the property. We had a case three months ago here, around January. Seller said they can go in the backyard, but I'm not taking you in my house. There was nothing in the open. We being had a call, you know, that we had to call that our sellers, right? You know, we, we are working with our sellers. So I called, Jack did try, Vivi and try. No, he says they had visits and they did it. No, I don't want anybody in my house. They are allowed to go in the bank. They, I can open the garage, but not in my house. Yes. I have a question. What if the house is uh, occupied by a tenant? That's even worse. Actually, that's even worse. Tenants have their own rights. They said, you bothered me already three times. I don't want anybody else. You know? Now, having that clause, will it save the problem with the tenants? Sometimes no, because tenants are always, uh, they're, sometimes they give hard time. Sometimes they are very good. So, but at least you have it. Don't forget one thing, there is a third party and it's the lawyer. Either the buyer for you or the seller for you. They are there. You make twenty thousand, they make one thousand. Look at the difference. Okay? You make fifty thousand, they still make one thousand. So they have to blame on somebody. When there is an offer on the table and it wasn't conditional on the lawyer's review, and then you forgot to put something. The first person we can blame is us. Okay, they're gonna say, yeah, the appraiser cannot put it because we didn't, your agent didn't put it in. Your agent, he is me, you, everybody else. Okay, then you are already crucified because to start with, if that house doesn't get uh, appraised and doesn't close, that's because of it. because there was not enough information in the deal. Now you put that and they argue, then you have nothing to worry about. The deal won't close, but at least they are not gonna come after you. You may not get your commission, but that's not all. You will not get sued because you did everything properly. And that's only two words. In addition to the visit, seller agrees to allow the bank representative before the closing that day. It's like one sentence. That's it. Very easy to remember. You don't need a lawyer to write it. Yet, none of the offers. And this deal that we had problem in January, it closed two days later than anticipated day because they had an issue. Like I said, in the beginning, we shake hands, we are friends. If anything happens in between the transaction before closing, we become enemies. It doesn't matter how close you are. Money. You promise something, you don't go with your promise. They promise something, everything changes. I am dealing now with a very angry seller. 
She said, I want a cancellation. And the agent is saying, no, I spent so much money to do this. And I believe the seller more than my agent, even though, you know, she is mine. She's one of my, uh, you know, grandchild over here. It's a young agent, you know. And I, I feel bad. But on the other hand, I think there is something missing in between. There was a miscommunication from the beginning. And I checked the file, listing pictures that are not exactly what he was promised. And then a few other things were not exactly done. So I am working to solve this problem. And today is going to be the day. Because yesterday she started crying on the phone. I'm going to really go to my work. We don't want this to happen. You know, and we don't want to cancel this thing. So we are trying to, I came yesterday, my first day in business. Oh my God. I said, I wish I had stayed in another stage. So it was, it was a busy day. And sometimes it's good business. Sometimes when people cry and scream on the phone, it's not a very good day. So anyhow, we have to deal with it. Yeah, to, yes. Before you make it any offer, can you get that pressure to see the property? Uh, it's usually not very common because if your offer don't get accepted, then you spend the two hundred and fifty. Because you want, you want, you want to set the price. So if it doesn't work like that. You have to have an appraised. Uh, you have to have an accepted offer. You know, and then you, you should get the appraiser. Because first of all, appraiser cannot give you a price. He cannot say to you, oh, don't buy this house for 800, it's only worth 750. Because they don't even know if the seller going to go for 750, 800, 900, they have no idea. They cannot give you that privilege, okay? Second, why would you spend? If that house doesn't happen, then you have another one. Yeah. Then you're going to spend another $300. It's like home inspection, right? You keep getting people, and then if they don't get it, then you have to pay the money. Before you buy a house, it will cost you three, four thousand dollars if there is showings and showings, and that it doesn't go through. It's not very practical. I'm not saying you can. As if long the as the buyer accepts them, you're paying. The if money. the buyer is paying and the seller agree, I don't see a problem. But they, everybody has to agree because sometimes sellers say, "Why am I going to show my house if I don't have an offer?" I would. Why should I get a strange person if there is no negotiation established? So I, I wouldn't. But again, if everybody is agreeing, I don't you know, see anything. So the, the seller's agent is responsible for all the showing. That's what the seller wanted. Now appraiser is going, and it's in the offer. You cannot give the lock box to the appraiser. I'm coming to that. Okay? This is the bank representative. He has a title. Unless the seller signed that, it's OK. You see, that's what the, we have this paper, okay? And you have to specify, is it okay if the appraiser come along? Yeah, it's okay, no problem. Because this guy is a known with RBC or CIBC. He's not coming from, uh, they make appointment with you. But 90% of the time, I would prefer to be there. I wouldn't leave my seller unattended. I want to know the appraiser, who the guy is. I want to take his card. I give my card. And at this, if anything goes happening afterward, I know the way you look at the property. I can even get a few words out of it, you know. If you become friendly in the beginning, hi, how are you? My name is Gregory, you know, nice to meet you. And maybe on the way back out, so how do you see everything? Oh, everything is good. You want to you won't give you price or or uh, you know information. Oh, everything looks good. At least you know that he is living happy. If he says to you, well, you know, we're gonna work on it, then maybe there is gonna be a small issue. So you're prepared, it's not like something new, okay? I would be there. If the seller demands it, you have to be there. If not, I would still be there. I don't want to give the uh, lot box to anybody because it's okay with the seller. Uh, okay, Gregory, when you put this um, clause into the, uh, the offer, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, uh, a buyer, I mean, the seller agrees to allow one extra visit for bank appraisal, um, what time frame would you put? You don't have to before the closing. Because you don't know when that gets That's a problem. You can't do it like an inspection within five no, days. No, you can't because if you're lucky to get the bank to accept the appraisal within five business days, then you have condition, it's done already. But if the bank is saying, oh, don't worry, this is a client here, or we are okay, he has enough money, you know, everything looks good, you're going to send the appraiser, you cannot force, even though you are asking for it, if it doesn't happen, it has to be before the date of closing. So any time before the date of closing. So I would have to add that yes, definition. Yes, that would be, because there is no time frame. It's safer to be open. Okay. Some banks go a week before, some banks do three days before, you know, so. Any day before closing. Yeah, before closing. 
before the data flows. You know. So this way you are safe. Okay. So this these are the papers that we should carry with us. And I think this one is in our listing package, if I'm not mistaken. It's the phone number one zero eight. Okay. This must be there. But is this it one included now? Pardon? Is it included? The it should be in there. I saw it once, but I will double check it and tell the girls okay. to put it in the packages. But this one here, seller service uh, form checklist, to, uh, form number 280, it's a super, super form. They came up this year. And if you have one of this, you will never miss anything because it's check mark, you know, check mark. Anything that you think maybe wasn't necessary, then you don't check. Because every house is different. You may not need a mortgage verification on one. You may need on another one. That's in here. You may not need an amendment on one, maybe you need on another one, okay? And don't forget, when you're selling, you need pin track on everything except rentals, all right? So that, uh, that is that. 280. 280. 280. 280. 280. 280. 280. 280. 280. 280. 280. 280. 280. Agents, license, licenses revoke agents, not one, two of them, after suing the link senior. So I read this. It's a it's a it's a story that I wish everybody can read. I cannot make a copy of everything. Um, this is not happening in Toronto, it's outside of the Toronto. 86 year old uh, seller is being taken for a ride by the two agents. They sold his house and they promised him one year free rent. But the house was sold about 50% day wide, obviously, of the market price. If he had a drug issue, mental issue, so he would believe anybody, you know, like the, the way it's written here. And yeah, like we are licensed, obviously, you look for good deals, but uh, to go up years ago, years ago, 40 years ago, I was working in a company on Danforth. That's my uh, initial uh, start. It's an Italian company. I had a door lighting card, it's like everybody else. I used to go, you want to sell your house, you know, I'm not a Jehovah Witnesses, you know, I just want to make sure that you want to sell your house. But a lady opened the door, she was probably at least 80 to 85. Now, 45 years ago, 40 years ago, 80 looked very old to me because I was a young guy, right? It's a, I'm like 25, 30, and all of a sudden, and she was with a cane, an Italian background. I said, and my wife speaking <coughs> Italian, I speak few words then, nice, a lot better. So I said, the Signora, you know, don't just come on in. Oh my God, what a lucky day. It's 11 in the morning, <laughs> Wednesday, come on in. If they are calling you, there is a hope, right? So I go inside. Uh, she speaks English, she speaks Italian, cafe. Yeah, 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 sure, coffee, why not? You know, the more I stay there, the more chances I have. So she was from Venice, northern Italy, very clean. Person, you know, uh, depending her age, some people at 80, 85, they don't look as clean as her. So we sat down, we are having coffee, she gets the S cookies, you know, out. And then, <laughs> and then I said, the reason I am here, <clears throat> I am looking for a property. And he said, yeah, I said, why not? But the way she says it, like she is ready. But I don't know if I am doing the right thing because she is all by herself. There is no one. Uh, Beside her. <coughs> Thank you. So I start a little bit more. You know, I said, okay, well, when, when would you like to know? Where would you go from here? You know? Oh, he says, well, don't worry about that. You know, you start getting into business. And and then I I remember when you are licensed and you're dealing with an older person, whether they are in the right state of mind or not, you have to be very careful. It's not like you get your signature and that's it, it's done. If she is not in a right state of mind at that moment, it's like dealing with a drunk person, okay? 
So I said, do you have any family member, any doctor, son, sister, brother? So why do you ask? I said, I want to make an appointment when one of the family member is here so we can talk. You know what she told me? She said, you think I'm crazy? I said, no, I never said that, but I want to make sure that we are doing what we are doing is right, you know? Yeah, I said, I have a son, but he is uh, not going to be here till next week. I said, why don't I make an appointment next week? And then we'll go over. I didn't want to take your signature. It didn't look like kosher. It was so easy for me to get her on the paper. And I estimated her 80. She could have been 90. I don't even know that. So those people are considered minor, you know. After a certain age, if they go to court, they say, I didn't know what I was doing. He told me to sign here. I signed it. They are considered minor. Especially when you take to this thing and, and sell it, if it doesn't close, you even lose your license. Okay, that's what happened here. Exactly, they were working with an older person, and they got his house on the market or exclusive. I don't know the details, and then they bought it at that fifty percent value of the market price, and they told them, "Don't worry about it. You have one year free rent. Big deal." Like $1,500, $2,000 one year, it's like $18,000. But the house came to them maybe $150,000 cheaper. And they got cut, and both of them paid with their license, which is perfect. I love it. So that's one, one, one case over here. The other case here that is very interesting, I collect this thing, then I go away, I took them to the airport and read them, you know, so that gives me a little bit extra. Time. Okay. Tribunals. Charge two counts of uh, furnishing false information in an application of registration. This is when you are registering yourself. Two counts of failing to notify the registrar in writing within five days of a change of information, $5,000. Now, if you don't pay this, you get kicked out. Okay. The information on anything renewal must be 100% correct. If you are modifying it and they cut you, they give you a fine, you don't pay, then you are out of the business. They cannot force you out because you lose your license, that's your departure. Okay? Uh, we have $3,000 fine and $15,000 fine. November, November, uh, November 10, 2017. So it's only a few months ago. Duty to client, uh, com uh, co uh, competent service, presentation of offers, duty to ensure compliance, broker of record misrepresentation, negligence, unprofessional conduct, one fifteen thousand one five, And the name of the person is Andrew Sotzak, Victoria Harbor. And this is from Vaughan, Ontario, $7,000. November 13, 2017, yeah. financial responsibility, unprofessional conduct, and false application. That's seven dollars. These are all real, and you can check them yourself. It's another five thousand dollars duty to client and competent and incompetent service, financial responsibility, misrepresentation, negligence, unprofessional conduct, fifteen thousand dollars, and then misrepresentation, negligence, unprofessional conduct. Presentation I offered, that means there was some issues with that, $7,000, November 24, 2017. So these are pages and pages, if I get them out. And there is another one that uh, here is $3,500, giving up uh, giving outcomes to non-licensed person. So we were just talking about that. Lock box numbers are not supposed to be given to non-licensed person. And another advice, when you have a lockbox on a property, do me a big favor. Don't leave it for two months with the same combination. Everybody will have that combination. When they, they know that people are not home during the day, they will go and show the property without even you knowing. That happens, believe it or not. So change the lockbox combination every seven to 10 days. The seller should know the last class combination and your office immediately because if you leave the old party, then there is going to be a problem. While you are changing it, whatever you are changing to, and it's sometimes very funny. I put 2015, let's say, on a last class. A day after, I don't change nothing or a week after. I say 
5102. It's the same, but I give it a different, you know, if the push button is the same thing. You either have 2015 or 5102. It's the same thing, you know? So sometimes, yeah, you know the push buttons, the mark boxes? They are the same whichever way you go. Either you go 5101, you know, it's the same because unless they are in, in line. Then you have, yeah, yeah, this is the old one. Yeah. In line one, you can you cannot do that obviously. Okay? But change dot boxes no more, not less than 10 days. I mean, uh, no more than 10 days. Every 10 days, you should change it and uh, notify it to the office. You don't want your lock box to be wrong. And if the property is sold conditional and it's five days, six days, or 10 days, don't leave the key in there. Take it and give it to the seller because within those conditional days, if there are no showings, you don't need the key. You don't want anybody going with that. Sellers could be on holidays, and then agents, some agents, may take advantage of them. You know, they know they may send somebody there with no uh, proper uh, registration or appointment. You don't want it. And some of the charges that I didn't print is all lockbox issue. Either the the agent is not present, or they give the lockbox to an inspector or the appraiser, and the seller found out. And there are some of them heavier. Seven thousand, six thousand dollars. If you're selling a small home, apartment or something, you, you make ten thousand dollars, right? It's the most, you know. I mean, you pay seven thousand dollars, and plus you have to take a couple courses sometimes, extra. Okay, I don't think it's necessary. So if you are a little bit more careful, I think it would be a lot easier to be in real estate. Yes. Okay. You say it's advice to to let the vendors. Uh, yeah, I think so. This year, this year, this year. I think if they feel comfortable to take the key inside at night, they should be able to take it. See, your key is outside. We have how many agents? 50,000 in Ontario? Roughly? Do we know everybody's mental problem? Look what happened a couple days ago, not you. I'm just going to give an example. There are crazy people. They somehow they managed to get master and that guy who was uh, charged with 10 uh, first yeah, even order and 13 uh, attempted murder. So this guy was in the Canadian Army for two months. And what I hear from the Canadian Army officials, they had a full check on it before they accepted it. There was nothing in his, uh, in his uh, background that he would uh, not allow him to be an Indian soldier. So yet, after a year or whatever, look what happened. There is no motive behind. There is no ISIS. There is nothing involved. He is crazy. So we have 50,000 agents. Okay? Now, how do we know all of them are normal like us? There could be somebody with a... There was, there was one in the open houses, he was attacking uh, ladies. There was one in, uh, in Oakville years ago, you know. There are some maybe that don't have the same uh, idea with us, right? So I would prefer to tell, to give the luxury to my seller. If they are more comfortable to take the key at night and leave it in the morning, why not just stay at home? They give you the key, they deserve that, okay? I would give that option. Now they say we are okay, oh, yeah, I'm okay with that. But I had a listing, and they were more, more comfortable, you know, to take the key at night and put it in the morning. I said, the only thing I said, you make sure in the morning at the door, make sure the key is in there. Put a note that you remember before you go out. Or else there is going to be an issue with you. Nothing happened. The listing got sold and everything is okay. But they had the option to take it, and they did it. They had a young child. They are more safe. safe. They, are, they feel comfortable, more comfortable to take the key inside. Why would I get my key from 9 o'clock until next morning, 7 o'clock, middle of the night? And there, there has been showing maybe 20, 30, 40 showing sometimes. And don't forget one thing. It's not only the agent. Some agents, some clients pick up the box number. you got to be careful. And you know what, what we do most of us? The worst thing, to, you know what I'm going to say, right? MLS listing, let's ask you. We put the date, we are showing it, April 25, 11 to 12, and we put on confirmation. Go direct, that's what I do, go direct. Lockbox, I put the lockbox, with, I never put it right, I put it backwards or sideways or whatever. This is me. So if you put the lockbox number right underneath, and then they are checking the listing, right? They are seeing if the refrigerator is there, 
condition, is the house, you give them a copy while you are driving or they are there at the house. They they know that black box car. Do we know who those people are? Did, did, did we know them for years or we just met them? There are times you only see this person once and you don't even know where he lives. They don't give you information. They come to the open house or you meet them in front of the house. So these people have your black box. And, and if anything happens, now I'm trying to get the police involved. Did they give you the right number? Do you have their cell number, home number, address? You, they may have given you maybe wrong information about themselves, and they have a different idea. They pick that up, and they go to the house another time on their own. So these are all the small stuff that years and years experience builds up. Okay. Now, this is how I would do it. Now, how you operate your business is your choice, but you got to be very careful because there are a lot of loopholes in this business, especially with the safety. Right? So it's almost uh, an hour that I've been uh, talking about. There are a couple other ones, but I'm going to open the floor for a question, and then if I can answer, yeah. So for the inspection, so we have, let's say, pre-time inspection. We have used two outcomes. So is the appraisal part of the inspection? No. No, you, unless you specify that it's part of the inspection, then yes, because they say you are only allowed to come in, not even your mother and your father in law is part of the inspection. They didn't buy the house. But most sellers are nice and kind. They say, if you want to, you, you can ask, I am my mother visiting from uh, back home. Is it okay if she sees it? 99% they will say yes, but they can refuse more than the husband and wife and your own kids because those are the buyers. But most of us, Bring a couple other people sometimes, it's okay. So, how about the, the final inspection? So, the appliances must be liquid. Then, you leave that one just before closing. So, that's the part. Yeah, yeah, you can leave that one just before closing. That, that you can go and check the property if there's any broken windows or if anything has changed since the first time, you know. So, if you use all the inspection, let's say times or three, two times, so at the end, if the seller says no, we can't, or if it's in writing and you have a confirmation with the listing agent that you show the property twice because they have a record of it and the third time will be two days before. But in our north office, Aurora, they have a very good clause. We don't have it. I don't know Vivian. I don't even know if Vivian knows about the DTH. It says that the last inspection should not be closer than one week to the closing. I think you know that, right? Yeah. So there is a clause. Because as a seller's agent, I would like to see that. You know, if you don't want the last day of the closing that everybody is ready packing up the boxes and stuff, people are coming three people to look at the house. That's not fair idea. You know. So whether it's workable or not, but that's that's something that to to, to be careful. You know, if you are on the seller side, I think maybe you should. Sorry, that clause is the buyer the visit can't be in the last within the last 10 days okay. of the closing. So, so, yeah, yeah, you know, you, you don't want to go within yeah. the, you know, everything is packed up and you're going, uh, you know, you may break something, you may, it, it's not fair for the seller to, to let you go in the last day of the closing. You know, that's not. And you that happen and say, unless it is for that Yes, that is probably that the, 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 yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. The that's last... only for the visit because, you know, the last purchaser visit, you don't even have to Nothing because your appraisal is up to closing date. Yes, yes. So if it's not changed, appraisal stays up to yes. the closing date, but the last visit of the buyer okay. will be within a week or two or ten days of the closing. Okay. So I, for, for my, let's say, precious for my clients, so mm -hmm. I've emailed the boy that the soap in the basement and the fan in the washroom should be changed because it's quite the interest for the school. Okay. I don't know if even he has been changed or not. So can I email us so months before closing to see what's going on? Or sure. I can keep it closed well, two if weeks. You, if you're working with email and they confirm that it's been done, yeah. keep those things. In case it's not, then at least you have something in writing from them yeah. to you. And this way the buyer is comfortable. If they are lying, then it would be, you know, the, the job is on their side. If they are lying, but if, if it's done, there's nothing to worry. But always in real estate, one more thing: never depend on anybody's yeah. that Everything must be, right. has to be, hundred and ten percent in writing. Unless you are in a 
look like this, I promise to him something, and there's 15 other people listening to me, and they are going to, there is a court case, all your 15 of them, they are there and say, yeah, we heard him, he promised him. 15 of you say the same thing, then I lose the case. But one person saying, oh, I was there, writing, in writing. It has to be very simple. It has to be very understandable. If I lose this, and somebody finds it on the street, when they read it, they should understand what it means. Because we create the stuff sometimes, clauses, like it, 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 it doesn't make sense. Make it simple, like I told her. The last visit is within one week. That's it, the buyer's last visit. Or the uh, appraisal visit up to the closing date, because they may go a day before. I don't know when they will go, right? It's not in my hand. So, like that. Let me see what this guy did. I think he did 20 out of one. Can you see this? Oh, there is another 20. Yeah, that's fine. Let me get one of each. And then I can, I can give this one over there. Okay, you do that. Then. So, uh, I'll give you one of this uh, each. Any, any particular question about residential real estate that is bothering you or you want to know a little bit more? If I can answer, okay? I know, I know some, I cannot say a lot. And everybody is limited. I am still learning after 45 years. How long ago you started? <laughs> you've, been, you've been in it from. Don't say anything. Yeah. He's yeah. one of my old buddies, Italian buddies from Denver. Yeah. So years and years. Yeah. On the structure, is it advisable for the buyer's agent to be for the home structure? It's not for the inspector, it's for the buyer. One of the buyer members must be there, I think, to go with the home inspector, and the agent should be there to support the buyer. You don't want to leave your buyer with the listing agent. But you have a buyer agency, you did the offer, you got it accepted, you have to be there. Yeah, yeah. Three hours is not it. You make it two and a half percent. On twenty one million dollars today is an average rate. It's then twenty two and a half percent is twenty five thousand. Three hours twenty five thousand and maybe a couple shorts. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Oh my God, that's a lot of money. If you put it on our debate, it's a lot of money. So last night, uh, it was my son's birthday, so we were- Happy birthday to your son. How old is he now? 18. 18? Yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. God. It's the unbelievable you, though. The way you said it, like he is five, six years old. Yeah. Like yeah, last night, he, he was, was five. For you, it's always five, six years old. Yeah, yeah. I have I have three <laughs> others. For me, it's always like babies, you know? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. So a friend of mine was asking, so he has a house as an owner, he wants to rent it to a friend. So can we do it just friendly, don't write anything, so a letting me look this as a private. So is it dangerous for me as a other option? No, it's not dangerous, but don't don't put your name anywhere, don't put reality pages and the name anywhere. Uh, as long as they agree between the terms and conditions. No, no, they don't want to sign anything. So it's a friend. So for money, so maybe two thousand per month. No. So she says, if you're like you it, if you're like you it, is it okay or not? The answer is and oh. Yeah, like I said in the beginning. Like no, he was asking. No. Oh. So we really were no. asking. The yes. Uh, you know what I said in the beginning? I'm an expert, so what's this? You, know, you know what I said in the beginning? Yeah. I said two things. One now and one in the beginning. I said, everything starts shaking hands and hugging each other. Like yesterday, Trump was kissing the French president, yeah. right? But we don't know six months from now they are still going to kiss each other or they're going to kill each other. We have no idea. But yesterday they were hugging each other. Yeah. Everything starts like that. Middle of the term of the list, anything can go wrong with the house, with the uh, tenant, okay? Any, anything. Let's say something is wrong and the seller said, oh, that's nothing. I lived with that uh, for 10 years. Why are you asking me to fix it? That's going to cost me 2000 or 1000 And the tenant is not happy. That nice the start is going to diminish slowly, slowly, it's going to diminish. So that's number one. Number two, the wire, the tenant says, now I have enough money, eight months in a list, I want to buy a house. The guy says, you rent it for one year, I could have rented it to somebody else. To me, no. That's number one. And I said, a while ago, everything must be in writing. That's not only for real estate agents and brokerages, it's also for clients. That's my personal opinion. Okay, so I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, but we can we can help them bring it in to sign the contract. Yeah, you can help them. No charge, no nothing. They use uh, as long as your name and 
their uh, royal images and nobody involved. If there is any issue, you are not in it. We are not in it. You, no, we are official, so we can just official? create. Yeah, yeah official. Oh my God, you love it. You're going to get this uh, $500. Though. Now you know. Right? Well, the office expense will be great. So yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. My lawyer friend, I talked about Yeah, no problem. So. No problem. Any questions? There is 45 minutes. If you want, I can go ahead with this, but I want the reason we created today uh, questions and answers. If we can answer, yes. Yeah. Exactly about the uh, seller's inspection. Seller? Inspector. Inspector. Is that the seller brings the inspector before listing the house? That's a possibility. Okay, let me let me go back to that. There are times the seller agent, if it's going to be a multiple offer setup, they don't want to waste time for conditions. They want qualified buyers. So what they do, the buyer financing, they cannot help because the buyers are somebody else they don't know. They get an inspector, name brand inspector, not somebody with no license. They get the house inspected before they put it on the market. Okay? And they leave a copy or uh, you know, web, web copy on the kitchen table. Now, if you are interested and the company is reliable, like Pillars and Pillars to Post and Carson and Dunlop, so many others, then you take a copy of it and you read it. If there are no major issues, except maybe if one of the doors uh, hinges, uh, nothing. Those are small stuff or maybe small uh, other stuff. If nothing major issue, then you are satisfied. You don't need to spend the money and you don't need to put that condition. Okay? But, but the, the buyer can put... Or can if, if they says I don't like this guy's uh, inspection report, okay. I'm going to go my home. Right. But you know what's going to happen if the house is a good value, and that night there is going to be ten offers. You have a condition in there, one more. They will accept somebody with five thousand less, which I did when I was selling my house, unconditional to somebody, because conditional offers are even three, four, five thousand dollar more, and they are not defendable. I had three offers on my house. This is years ago when I sold it. One was like 12,000 more, but it had two conditions. I'm not going to go for that. I'd rather give it to someone with a certified check, $60,000 in my hand, no condition, perfect closing, but it's 10,000 on a million and a half. I, I don't care if I'm not making that. Because those people wake up in the morning or two days after, they say, you know what, you rushed. You didn't even know if those people were coming good price or not. They changed their mind. What are you going to do? You can never get the other people. But this is the seller side. The buyer side has the option to put anything you want. Lawyer inspection, uh, you know, approval. Uh, Kurt, we're getting back to the inspection, okay? And uh, what uh, this lady was saying about the seller is a good idea before someone is serious about listening to do that. Now, if, if the seller does that, it would be a good idea. And then for the SPIS to put down yes, because an inspection is way more informative than SPIS. Nope. Separate? SPI is totally different, uh, different animal. Okay. Now it is recommended for by some lawyers, and it is not recommended by Oria or even Ted. It is not. Let me tell you why. Because most of the time, when we are filling something and we are not doing the right way, it's actually worse than not having. Okay. If I am gonna write something, and if it's gonna be working against me after two months or three months or a year, I better don't write it. Because that thing that you put down there, if it's any any uh, exaggeration or is not good, he can come back and get it. Most of us use that for a bit check mark. That's not supposed to be like that. Sellers have to initial every box. Now, when you are working with a seller, inspection doesn't cover most of the stuff, not even maybe they only ask about the condition of the house. Are you ever have any roof leak or whatever, or the condition of your window? Inspector is only going to check that. They also ask in that, is there any housing, uh, Ontario housing in your area? Inspector doesn't know that, and he doesn't care whether there are. Is there any jail around your area? Maybe you're living close to, like, uh, not that it matters. Some people don't care about those two, right? They buy it next to cemetery. But inspectors don't care about that. They are in the house to check the house, nothing else. And inspectors don't get involved with those things. And you cannot say, 
I do this because the inspection report was done 100 percent and everything is in here. No, seller is responsible for that. And there are times sellers are responsible even for the previews because most of the time they say up to the time that seller owned it. You know, you have to make sure that that's in there. You know, I seen I seen uh, so many stuff like that. I did it on my brother's house. I did it because there was an issue. And I wanted to make sure it was the issue with the power. And I had to, to specifically do that and attach it to this. This was about 25 years ago. Because I was dealing with my brother, it's, it's a relative. And on the other hand, I could have dealt with the buyer that is my own. So there is a conflict, you see. So I took that one and I said, please check SPIS and make sure its initials are signed before the open presentation. There was a tree going through the sewage, and every time, every year, they had a problem in the building. It wasn't the house, it was the city tree, not even our tree. The roots were going crazy. We asked the city how many times, cut the tree or do something that it doesn't. They came and they did, they put in their pictures and stuff, but it didn't result, solve the problem. So still, there was a need. The buyer liked the property, but they had to know about that. I don't want to hide anything, especially dealing with the relatives, right? Then they say, you, you you had any information about this, and I know, I cannot say, no, I didn't know, you never told me anything. Yeah. So, and they accepted it after that, they had no problem. Even if they had a problem with it, they assumed that problem would be the house. And would it be wise to put in the description and the listing, when you're described and you're putting the both these remarks, to write down, uh, inspection report is available yeah. on request. Yeah. Just to show yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not hiding anything yeah, yeah. and the property's been well checked out. Of course. Yeah. So it's Over bonus. presentation next Tuesday, inspection report available at the property or on your yeah. request by email or whatever. Okay. So you send everything to them. You're looking to me. <laughs> You're saying Gregory is my turn now, and I'm giving yeah, you. Yeah, I forgot the, the question yesterday. What was you? it? Yes. I asked you two questions. Two questions. You, you asked me to. Yes, okay, tell me now. I don't. You don't I remember? Don't oh my God. I was trying to remember. Oh, the buyer asked you to and you suggested he had it right. And the buyer doesn't want any more to ask you to suggest Sure. You don't say that's broker. You suggest your own broker here, Janet or in other offices because they work for reality page and they don't do zigzag, you know, like some other ones. I'm not generalizing everyone is the same, but there are some other ones. If you're working with big banks and if they are they know you, they will work with you closer than other people. Okay? Now if they know someone in their own bank, leave them alone. But it's working with Janet or someone a representative of your office it's more advantageous, I tell you why. You have a five day condition in every offer, usually five business days, okay? He goes to the bank. They, they are free to go anywhere they want and they get up to five. Now, but privacy is number one issue. Banks will never tell you anything about your client even though you have a signed PRA, okay? That's a different story. That's to show a house, to sell a house. Their financial situation is totally private. Okay, now you sold the property Sunday night. Your condition is that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is the last day. Correct? Today is Friday. Let's assume that you haven't heard nothing from anybody. Okay, and you call your client. They say, "Oh, we're gonna know today. You know, everything looks okay, but we're gonna know today." So your condition. Most of us do this same mistake, is expiring 6 p.m., which is the worst time of the day. Why do we expire conditions at 6 p.m.? This is not commercial, this is residential. 11, 10, 11, 59, the more time you have for your buyer, the better it is. Miracles can happen. Maybe tonight there is 8 o'clock lottery and they win 100,000. And then all of a sudden you don't need the bank anymore, right? This can happen at this so don't expire any conditions at 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, until 10, minimum. So you wait till 5 o'clock, no use. Your condition is expired in one hour. And then you call the bank. 
The bank says, I'm sorry, it's a privacy, we cannot give you any information. We will talk to the client. The client calls you 515. He says they did not go. There was a small issue, they need more time. Now you have 45 minutes to either wait the condition or nullify the order. Or to get an extension. extension. Now, how the hell are you gonna find somebody? Your client, first of all, is gonna sign an amendment that five days will be seven days till Tuesday. Or you found your client by docu site where you're gonna get the seller. The seller has to accept that. The agent is gonna say, Well, I waited all five days and you're coming in now. This will not happen if your representative, Janet, I'm not taking anything from Janet. I'm not trying to sell your services. You can go in any other office. I'm giving you an example. Your representative would have told you on Wednesday, saying, Gregory, I think you're going to have a little bit of problem. I left you on tomorrow morning, which is Thursday. You need extension. Frank wouldn't tell you, but he would tell you. She would. So now, if you know this problem ahead of time, you tell the other agent, if I need a couple more days, this is okay. They are working very hard. You may be okay, but is it okay if you talk to yourself? So everything is already pre-arranged, you know? It's not a bomb, bang. No, I cannot do it, you know? So I prefer to work with people that I get digital information. I don't I don't want to know everything about the buyer, but that there is an issue with the credit bureau. They are trying to locate another company. So at least your amendment is ready Thursday night. You said it to them. They don't accept. The buyer says, don't worry, my father-in-law has uh, some money, I'm going to get it, take the condition out. You didn't know who to deal. Or, we cannot afford this house, I'm having problems, then prepare the insurance. Hype is always the asset. Okay. Yes, somebody was asking me a question. That's good. So, that's how it works. Right? Work with somebody that you can get rid of that information. That's all. I'm trying to remember what was the question yesterday, and I said, ask me tomorrow. You don't remember that? Anybody else anything else? Yeah, I, I remember you were with the CIMA. Uh, let me see now. What were you guys talking about? Yeah, what were we talking about? That was about her house. I said uh, tomorrow we're going to have an uh, open session. Yes, there was a lawyer about the uh, about the whole whole deposit holding or something. Oh yeah. Yeah, deposit holding, and uh, there was ten thousand dollars that they are holding in the trust account. Uh, and but there was her issue. Were you involved in that? No, no, you were not involved. That was her issue. Yeah. Anyway, so then we can go a little more with this thing. If you don't have any, if you remember anything, let me know. Okay, let's talk about when you're representing your client. Don't forget, it says, there are rights of the tenants, okay? Tenant properties. The laws are changing as of, some of them change already, but now the real tenants law is coming as of April 30th. Now, we had two tenancy issues yesterday. I think it's good time maybe to talk about it. Before every one of us, when we are renting a place, we do agreement to lease, and then you put a paragraph in there upon everybody's signature. You don't need no other list. This will be the list. Okay? So that means once this is accepted, the agreement to this, then you don't need no other additional contract. Years ago, this wasn't allowed. When I was working in real estate full time, you had to have a lease agreement by the landlord after the agreement of to this because that's an agreement to this it's not a lease but now because of the new electronic era everything is changed everybody start making everything shorter and somehow Ontario government and OREA and Korea accepted that paragraph but now they are going back again this is not something new that we have to have official this is not new 25 years ago I was using that different form Grand and toy. Anybody remember that the store? Yeah, they used to sell legal forms. This indenture. 
And my grandfather was saying, I have my dentures, I don't need another one. You know, so in danger and danger they can, you know, he said, I don't need another danger, I have it. Because I was renting a house to an old person in danger and danger, you know, they got confused. So this in danger, that was the heading on it, legal form. About six, seven pages, very, very basic. Tenant, landlord, and their rights. They took that up. Maybe I have a copy one day, uh, I'll show it to you from old days. So now it's coming back in a different form. What happens now when you are renting something today, it's closing tomorrow. It doesn't happen very often. Or you rented something last week and it's closing tomorrow. You can still use that clause because April 30 is a week from now or five days from now. What happens if you are doing something today and it's closing May 1st or after? Tenant is uh, has the right, tenants have the right to demand official lease, even though you are signing it today. The offer should not be written in a way that this is going to become a lease. You can anyway. It is closing after the third. So the good news is. <coughs> No, this is only for residential. Yeah. Commercial leases are always totally separated. What about condominium? Condominium, yes. Also. Residential condominium also. Now, <coughs> bless you. Uh, one more. Thank you. Usually. Usually. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is educational purposes only from Oria. Now you're going to say, how the hell he gets all these things? You know, maybe you have it too. I don't know. Some of you have it. No. They didn't. Yes. Now we are still going to use we are still going to use the same style of form, but it's changed. I'm giving you the form number. Four hundred revised March 2018 because the old number is the same. The old number is still four hundred, right? But this is revised twenty days. Okay. So. Everything is different on this form. It's not like your original offer to this. Everything is changed according to the new, new residential lease uh, rules. Remember the old one? There were the squares over here who pays the high yeah. floor base. You see, that's on the second page now. That this is totally changed. All right? There are different sections that we have to fill. There are different places that uh, they have to be initial. And there are different clauses in the list itself, pre-printed, either you like it or not. It's like offer, you know. Before, there were some stuff, but not as many and not identical. There are more rights given to the tenant now than before. And after you do this, this is not the end of it. This is only offer to this. Before, we used to put in here, once this is signed, that's it. You don't need anything anymore, right? No more. Within 21 days, not 22, if you don't give the tenant the proper disagreement, you can get charged by the landlord and tenant bureau legally. So is now, it, is it just for lease or not leasing? Leasing? It's just for lease or? No, it's both for both of them. They, they have to sign both. This is like an yes, offer to them. Yeah, this is signs it, gives it to the landlord. Okay, let's or let's or signs it, and it becomes a contract, mm -hmm. it, 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 depending on the condition of the transaction. You sign it today is closing the end of the month or the end of May. June first is your tenant going to move there, right? Mm -hmm. You either have the actual this ready before that. Or within 21 days after the tenant moves, you must give it. You so, to be for you, like that. So you still want to be on the schedule A, B, C. Yeah, there is a schedule A, B, C here, okay? But some of the stuff that we use to use, they are not allowing anymore. We're going to get new clauses, okay? And also, this is the list that yeah. we will sign yeah. after that. This is not the one that you go in to offer. Okay, this is the older one, Form 400, revised March, and this one here is the Ontario government residential tenancy agreement, the standard form of list. Okay, so there is the names and stuff. There is too many pages, but they are not all for you. Some of them are explanations about the stuff that I read and I tell you when you need it, 
And I will not get involved as much as before because there is a lot of new rules and I'm not a presidential tennis lawyer. So whatever I know, I know whatever I don't know. I say call the landlord and tenant because it's like responsibility of the brokerage. Uh, until we know more about it. So there is all kinds of stuff that is checkmarked, you know. You cannot charge, by the way, more than $20 for NSF check. We used to do $35, $40, and I see 50 bucks. If, I'm sorry, I used your name. If Mo gave me a check as a tenant, and it bounced it, it says in the offer that there will be a charge of $40, because his check NSF came NSF. No more, it's only 20 bucks, no more than that. You are not supposed to charge the last month, first only. You can <laughs> once they move in. Yes, after they move in, they have to pay you yeah. that, not before. Before we used to charge, right? Uh, so there are a lot of changes that you have to go over. And also, how are you going to get out of commission and HST if you only have one month deposit? That's a question now. Because when you have two months deposit, $2,000, first month, 1000 last month I'm making it simple. Last month, one thousand. The deal closes. The landlord does not get one thousand. He gets one thousand plus HST. So his side is minus of hundred and thirty dollars because there is one thousand plus HST. So his last month is nine hundred and eight hundred and seventy dollars, right? Now, where are you going to get that HST? That is a still question. If you ask the tenant, you have to pay me one month plus HST. Is going to be, uh, this is not a commercial list. Commercial, this is an HST. What is that for? This is for my commission. He's not going to give you hundred and thirty dollars more. So there is a still gray area. I don't know how you do. Pardon? Yeah. What the hell? You know? I I, I I give. So a lot of stuff in there. There are some new ones that the key deposits cannot be more than that, and you have to justify why you are asking. Why we used to ask three hundred dollars condominium keys? Do they really cost three hundred dollars? No. $75 maybe the parking, you need one. And then another $75, $75 for the, you know, entry. So it's $200 or $25. There is a limit time. You cannot go more than that. It, everything is controlled, right? And also, the forms are all changed. And one, and two, and three, everything is new. And 12, everything is changed. You want to move in your house and be careful that you say yes or your son, or your daughter, your sister, your mother, and your uncle. No more than that. They have to live in the house minimum one year. If the tenant moves out because you want to move in there, and you don't, then you rent it to somebody else. If they follow up and they find out, $25,000 penalty to the owner. That's in here. You're signing it, by the way. It's in here, okay? $25,000 penalty if they prove that you lied to them. Now, you move in, something happens, you move out, that's, I don't know what the tribunal laws and rules are. I don't know how long they have to stay, but they are saying minimum of one year. Your son, your daughter, your uncle, somebody related, you has to move in there. And then you are telling the tenant, we want you to move out. You got to give them 60 days minimum, to last a one month rent, to, to take them out, because you are moving there. So if the rent is 2500 you give them 60 days notice and plus $2,500. Or you have to find an identical accommodation, not identical, but similar accommodation, somewhere else and pay the one month then. Okay? So these are new rules again. Now, if you don't move in, there's a penalty. If you want the rent increase more than the actual allowance, which is 1.8% this year, you have to give a reason. There is a special form for them. Okay? And rent increases are not 60 days. It's 90 days. All right? It's, it's always the 90, by the way. You have a house, you have a rent. Just the, so, 90 days. Can you put an automatic rate of contracts here? Uh, each year will be automatic Do You have to give us 90 days. Yes. Yeah, 90 days. Also because you don't know each year how much it's going to be. It could be and another thing, if your taxes increases $50, $200, $500, depending the area, you know, real estate value, there is nothing you can do. You can apply for an extra increase if they approve it, the board has to approve it. If your taxes decreases, you have to share it with the tenant. 
I said the same thing. Oh, all in their favor. Yes. Okay. Now there is a formula they are using it. I don't have that formula, but there is a formula. It is so much you have to share it with them. It is less than that you have to share it differently. It's like a uh, how do I say income tax? You make hundred thousand, you pay twenty five percent. Let's say you make two hundred thousand, you pay forty percent. You know, so or fifty percent. So that takes like a formula. How much is it decreasing? That's according to that. So these are all is coming in effect. There's some of them are gray areas that uh, even the lawyers that we talk to or we discuss, they don't know everything because they don't have anything. Else. They only know what we do, okay, what I'm telling you. Obviously, they go in details with all the laws and the stuff. I'm just covering up now, just the basic stuff. But this, that, that's the way. Now, the buyer is buying your property. It's handed and you have a lease, obviously, the tenant has the first opportunity to say, I'm not moving because he has a lease in September and you, the buyer wants to move in July. So you cannot force the tenant unless you bribe it. You, you know, you say, listen, I, I'm going to give you $5,000 and he has to sign a paper that he is willing to move on that day. And the day that he is going to move, he is going to receive $5,000 certified check from me. Okay? Not regular check. So you have to bribe him because of the deal that you're losing otherwise. So if he accepts that fight, then he's gonna fight, you gotta give him 60 day process, but he is terminating, you are terminating his lease three months before the actual termination, but there is 5,000 costing, let's say, or 2,000 or whatever. So there is a form for that you sign, he accepts it, he signs and you get a copy. The day of the moving out, you gotta give him the money or he can stay there, obviously, and then the deal is not gonna flow because the buyer wants to in July 1st. So, so should you move the nation? Should you yeah, yeah, it's in right. Yeah, $5,000 I am giving and he's accepting to move. That's all legal. That's legal. Yeah, because they are both agreeing. I want you to move. Is it okay with you? He says, yeah, it's okay, but I have another three months, you know. It's like you're going to lose this deal if you don't, uh, you know, what are you going to do for me? And I'm saying, what do you want? Well, it's going to cost me moving, extra this, extra that. I bought a house, maybe it was going to be ready, and I have to move twice. It's going to cost me a little bit of money. How much? Well, you give me 5000 You say, can we do it three? Okay, three is okay. Well, you settle it. It's a good agreement. You are not doing anything illegal. He is accepting it. It's in writing, certified check. That's it. So everything that is agreeable, that's all. Now, he says, I'm not moving out. Because it doesn't matter the money, I will be here. You cannot break the list because he has hundred percent Then the buyer is accepting the tenant if he wants to buy the house until September. That's his problem. If the buyer says no, then there is no deal. The guy has a list, he has to stop. Let's assume that his list is expiring in July. Okay? And the buyer says, give the proper paperwork legally that you sold. You cannot tell the tenant, I'm going to sell the property next week. I am putting it on the market. Here is a 60 day loan. You cannot do that. Why? Because the property is not sold. First, you have to put it on the market. You get an offer. You go there to the tenant say, I sold the property. Uh, here is a 60 day. You cannot do that. It has to be a firm offer. It is conditional. It's not sold. You cannot treat the tenant, okay? So, it has to be firm over, number one. Number two, here's, this is expiring. Let's, let's talk about it. The end of June, okay? The end of June. So, when do you have to give proper notice to this person? Today you sold the property and it's firm. Today is 26th of the month. Can I go to the tenant and I say, here is the... 60 days notice, my buyer is going to move in 26th of June, and I'm giving you 60 days notice. Is that legal? No, why not? But you said it's sold, it sold firm. Yeah, it sold firm. Today you got the waiver, and the buyer says, I want to move in 26th of June, or 27th of June. Today is 26th. So we have 61 days. Can we give the tenant the notice today and say that now nah, we sold it firm, please move on? 
You can. You can. No. 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 You say yes. Now let me ask first of all when I when you are saying yes you can. Why are you saying yes you can? Because you said if it causes burn, then you can give it. You can give it this. Are you saying the same thing? You are agreeing. Why do you say no? You better come up with a good answer. <laughs> no, you said no, 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 you are in no. trouble. You come up with uh, something like uh, wishy washy. No, I think it has issue not to stay in Yemen for 90 days. Right? 90 days? No, that's only renting place. Oh, that's 90 nice. days is renting place. That's a good answer. Anyway. Why do you say no? Somebody else said no. This is not in 60 days. It is 60 days. Oh. Today is 26, and we are asking him to move 27 times June. So is that the end of the? Yeah. Uh, it's not the end of the rental period. You cannot. He doesn't have to move out. Actually, you make a mistake. He says yes. He doesn't move out. You cannot run here to start a new process. Let me tell you why. Yeah, because it's not your property. Yeah, not the doesn't matter. Let me tell you why. So the answer is no. The answer is no. You can. Let me tell you. Why. <laughs> Everything has 60 days from the rental period. If this person is paying beginning of the month, May to May 31st is one month. June to June 30th is two months. If you tend to move middle of the month because you're giving him the notice, that doesn't count. It has to be two full rental period. Exactly. So you sold it today. You can give the notice, the notice has to say the end of June. You're giving him early, two, three days early, which is better, but it has to say the end of June. If you're closing it, June 27, it's tough luck. You can stay till the end of it because the proper notice is a full two months. All right? So, what if, what if it's not a firm term? What if the term expires after one year and now you rent Month to month, 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 it's still the same thing. Two, 60 days, full 60 days of the rental period. 90 full times rental period if he is renting please, okay? You cannot come with the last month because let's say you sold it 10th of April and you got firm on the 11th or the 17th of April. 17 is not a term. April 1st was the term. You could have given it the end of March for the term. Now 17 is not a, it's the middle of the term. That doesn't count from 17 till the end of April is 13 days. It's not counting nowhere. You can give your notice on the 14th, 15th, up to the 29th or the 30th, but you got to allow it two full months there. Unless, again, there is something in writing that your, you know, your hands are shaking, then, then he's accepting you. So, so what about if the buyer, Yeah, that's a good question. We asked that to the lawyer. Now, if, if the buyer is closing it to move in, but there is renovation, the tenant has to agree, first of all, to move. There is no contract, okay? If there is a contract, you're not going to be able to get rid of him until the term is finished. Now, the tenant moved out. You really have to have a good intention that you're doing something. See, tenants are now, they are more aware of the things than before. It's like anything else, okay? It's, it's like everybody else. Right now, real estate became digital. Years ago, when we were in the business, we did not have this black mirror, I call it. You look at it, it's like a mirror, but it's black color. We did not have computers. We did not have anything such that you could communicate by email, by the photocopy papers were like toilet papers. You could print one side and then another side, not double-sided, and you could staple them together. And there were a lot of phone books. Now, do you see any phone books anymore? No, because, and then you get page, my first pager was deep, 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 red light. Everybody had that. Nobody had any better one. And then you knew your office paying you, your wife couldn't page you because there is a system attached to that pager. Your kids couldn't pay you. So you had to stop on a phone book. Put 25 cents, actually it was 10 cents when I started. 10 cents. You called the office, they were pink slips. Name, who called, what type, and pink slips, right? Yes. So, uh, and then you would say, oh, Joanne is looking 
for you. Here is the number. Then you would get that number. If it's important, you put another 10 cents or it would wait. Now, those days, people that they want to buy or sell, they couldn't do anything without you, me, him, and him, and him. Now they can do anything without us. They need they needed us more those days than today. We say they need us today too. Yes, definitely, but not as much as they did them. Because there was no information on the MS that they would say, I want to see this out. I want to uh, see that one because it looks like mine. There was no such information. Now is everything there, right? So time is changing. We have to go with the time. We are still making good, but 20 years from now, what happened? We don't know. Okay. So we have to adjust ourselves. So coming back to your question, yes, they, they, you want to renovate, but now tenants are more informative because they know now that there is such thing called landlord and tenant uh, office. They can get information. It's in the paper, it's in the newspaper, it's in the media, it's on computer, that everything is changing. They will follow. If you are the owner of that property and you did a reno, kitchen, washrooms, toilets, everything changed, and you move in there after six months, they have no claim. You did what you wanted. But you did all that or did it without you know paint job and stuff, you rent it to somebody else, they can come up. And you have to prove why did you do that? You change your mind, it has to be a proof. Now sometimes apartment high floors are very legit. You say, oh my God, my wife went there, she was going to fall down on the balcony. I tell her, you know, because it's like a 50 floor, which I never did that. That could be a good reason for some people that they have, you know, phobia. Elevator, you know, you tried, but it didn't work. You can prove that. Maybe the doctor can give a certificate. Yes, this person has a phobia on heights or elevators or claustrophobic, whatever. Then maybe there is a way they will not come up. But if you don't have anything and you rent it hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand so more money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So, so basically no one will buy the property that is branded, they want they want to change the brand to brand No, you have to Especially if you're increasing the rent, that's your idea. Because the guy is paying nineteen hundred, you know that next door is rented twenty four hundred or twenty three hundred. You can make three hundred dollars more, but with him you are only allowed one point eight percent. That's the idea. You can. But you said there are special increases that I have to up, uh, apply for that I, if I, if I do not increase my rent based on the book every year, or let's say for the past six, seven years, and now I realize that I can rent it three, four, five hundred dollars more a month. So you mentioned that there is a way how to, yeah, I can apply for 1.8% for this year. And also, you mentioned that also another increase that I can apply for this year. Would that would be with those increases? Well, there has to be additional increases, and they were, are they going to make a meeting with you? Like, for instance, would I be For instance, okay. you're putting a brand new air conditioning system. I don't. I don't. You don't. Sure. What is the reason? Taxes, taxes. You're, you're putting brand new kitchen. The, the, the tenant was not happy with the kitchen, not with the floor. You are changing this carpet okay. to a hardwood floor because of the allergic diagnosis. Those are the things maybe will they allow you. Otherwise, I don't know any. Your mortgage is higher. I don't think they care about it. No. I, I, it, it is that forty fifty dollars. Yeah, but it is it, sorry. It is thirty forty fifty dollars wrong because then everybody is getting. But it is an unrealistic increase. Or well, yeah, you could apply because then you say last year I was paying four hundred. This year I'm paying six hundred. The special levy they charge you ten thousand dollars because they didn't have enough money in the budget. They are repairing the balcony. But those kind of things, I think it will be enough reason for them to accept. Taxes and also the condo, condo fees, yeah. But it has to be reasonable. Fifty dollars in fees on tax is not going to get you nowhere, you know, because it's like no. yearly according to the inflation. Yeah. So what the building will tax Yes, I think that would be a good reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would that be a yeah, good reason? Yeah, those kind of, but they have a system though. 
what they do that 7,000 according to the tenants this term, they will, and then how much after they are willing to be. See, it's not only you, they have to go to the tenant and say that your rent is going to be so much. How long are you willing to stay here? Another year, then maybe proportion of that will apply, and then they will give you the green light to rent to somebody else for more money after this tenant moves out. You cannot just say, I pay 7,000, I'm increasing your rent because you're going to be here one year, $1,000 more. You can't do that. There is a formula that they use, but they will allow you that. And one of my friends, he has a, a duplex in the Kitchener. He applied for a special increase, and they approved because he did some renovation from outside. There was a brick work that it was deteriorating, and he put the garage. There was no garage after rental. People were more happy. It even like uh, almost uh, over maybe 5% increase, and they accepted it because of the, the garage that the, the, the tenants were happy to park in the garage. Before they were on the driveway, winter time they had to clean all the snow, and they didn't even beat that one. They just and accepted. you need to get approval before? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, not in advance. After you do the thing, you are doing it for improvement of your house anyway. And if the tenants are like happy about that improvement, then you say, listen, I'm going to do all this, but make sure that you will support me because I'm spending maybe $30,000 extra to make you happy. Are you going to be okay with it? If they kind of agree with that, then when you apply, they're going to be asked, like, this is going to be increased so much, $100 a month or $200 a month. They, they go, yeah, I mean, they cannot refuse. And they give them enough time. If you're not agreeing, it, that work has proven us that this is very legit. Then you can move out and get expired, and they move out, then you rent to somebody else for a higher fee. They are somehow somewhat reasonable if there is enough evidence that it's uh, deserved that interest. Gregory, what you were saying about we were talking about, you know, the month to month, and it's got to be the full month from the beginning to the end of the month. Okay, um, what if your tenant, you've got a lease agreement that started on the 15th of the month? It was always stipulated the 15th of the month, you pay rent. So 15th to 15th. Then so in that case, full month. that would be the full, so 15 to 15. It wouldn't have to be no. a calendar 1 to 30 to no. 1. No, it's okay. when you say full month, 90% of the rentals are first of the month with the end. Or let's say 80%. Some of them maybe 15 to 15, yeah. then it's your full month. Yeah. Some of them are even 7 to 7, because that's the way it worked out. Yeah. Then you're giving full month 7 to 7. If they started on the 7, if you didn't charge any cap, yeah. Because sometimes, you know what happened? You charge 23 days, and then your new lease starts first. If that didn't happen, you got to be careful because there is some progression in some leases. If I am renting on the 17th of the month, the landlord said, why don't we do 13 days prorate, and then we start everything on the first of the month. If that's the case, it becomes first of the month. Yeah. Because the tenant paid you 13 days extra right. from year to year, like the mortgage. You do have one yeah. day. In advance, they pay you, right? Or you pay them. So if it's not the case, then whatever the date you are starting, that's your month. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So final question for me. So for the case that friends is on the rent, so I have to do all the papers, buyers, rent, the other side, so they go, this is multiple offer. Yeah, it's going to be multiple representation if you wish, yeah. or whoever you want to represent as a client, the other person will be customer. That's a choice. If you know the uh, tenant more than the buyer, then you have a BRA, and the, the, the landlord is a customer, or vice versa. If you are working for the landlord, for then, the landlord. Yeah. then I landlord don't know is the tenant. Tenant. Pardon? I don't know the tenant, that's his friend. Okay, right. then then why why don't you do landlord as a client and the uh, tenant as a customer? Okay. So I don't need to. Know. You don't need the. Uh, I have to represent both. You can if you want to, but it's not a tool agency, it's not a multiple representation. In order to create a multiple representation, either yourself or someone in the office, it has to be BRA and a listing. If one side is a customer, no BRA or no listing, it's not a multiple. Then responsibilities are low. That doesn't mean none, but low. So, um, are you going to be available for the like oh, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, they, they have to, yeah. they have to, yeah, they have to, it's not a choice anymore. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's not a choice it's like all the yes. that you have to yes. Yes. exactly, yeah. Well, let me, let me go over one thing though. This agreement to this will be available in your offices, respectfully, 
to be typed by here by Brenda or other offices <laughs> by their administrator like they used to be before. But contracts are not our responsibility. It's the landlord's responsibility to be repaired or the landlord's agent, not even the tenant. Is the landlord has to supply provide to the tenant within 21 days. So I don't want you to confuse that this is going to be done by Brenda, no, or by your respective uh, uh, paperwork here. So the landlord will close it out and get to the tenant. Yeah, either landlord or the agent. If the landlord is not capable of uh, feeding this out, then the agent would be doing it for him and then support give it to the other party. So you're giving this to the other party, you're giving it to the tenant? Yes, the yeah, either the tenant directly as a landlord, you go there and you say, this is the list now that we are uh, signing, or he is not able to do it, his agent to the other agent and the other agent, because they are involved either before the moving date or after the moving date. 21 days is the limit after the moving date, but you can do it as early as right after the acceptance and the condition. Let's say you have a condition for credit bureau for the tenant, then will be satisfied, right? It's in there, yeah. Once it is being removed, you can say here is the list, uh, you know. It's so not, not before, before not the firm contract. Yes, exactly, firm offer date, yes. yeah. Exactly. This, is, this becomes a legal document between the two parties, but we don't prepare this. We don't have, we don't have, we girls don't have the knowledge to do this because it's between two parties. Uh, we, it, our administrators don't know even this paper. Maybe it's not even the system. This is on the government side, and I'm sure Oria will have it, but it's not a responsibility of the office to do it for you. They are not trained, they are not licensed. It's uh, between the one party to the other. It's actually the landlord to tenant, but some landlord is going to put the pressure on the agent, and other tenants going to say, you need it to be wise. Are we all capable of understanding everything? As a landlord? No, we have an agent, right? So they will be working, not the girls. They, the girls cannot work with this. You have to understand that. It's our responsibility. See, here there's too many pages, and there are check marks. They don't even know what we decided between the two parties. They have no idea. You cannot put that kind of a work on the administrative uh, person to prepare this for you, and it's all wrong. <laughs> you know, then they have to redo it again. They have no idea. You know what I'm saying? They don't know the property. They don't know what the laws that you are going with. They don't know your conditions. It's like they have no idea. They, they won't be able to do this. This, yes, preparation of the old to this. Yes, 400, exactly. You can do this. They do that with the clauses. They, that's what we used to do. But this new one, it's, it's uh, you know, it has to be done by us. Okay. Because so we're going to get copies of that. Pardon? The new one. The new one, you won't have this is on the government side. I give you the website if you want, and you can take it. Or you might be able to provide copies, but they, what I'm saying is even there are copies, they will not be providing the services to give this. Because it has nothing to do with their knowledge. There will be million mistakes on it. Because they will be it's about 10 pages and there are check marks over there, yes or no, yes or no. Are the dogs allowed? How do they know you have a dog or not? Like, very yeah, simple. Yeah, yeah. Smoking is allowed or not. They don't know if the seller or the landlord is willing to have somebody with smoking habits or no. Are they going to put yes or no or maybe, you know, the dogs. Some condominium <coughs> restriction no more than 230 pounds. They have no idea, right? So it's between two parties. Well, it's about 12 o'clock. So the website is the website. Standard. The website is a government website. Ten, landlord than tenant bureau. If you go in there, you will find the new tenancy leases, and you will, uh, you know, you will uh, print it as many things as you want. But what I would suggest to get involved and familiarize the form, you should, even though you are not working with a tenant or a landlord, everybody should print one and read and see what kind of a documentation your living and what you need about the deposits and all these things, you know. So I think that would be ideal before you have a tenant or landlord that they ask you all these questions and you are not aware of it, you know. So May 23rd is Wednesday, it's the power of sale, new course, we never did it here. I'm doing it. And I will touch back and forth with the different power of sale and foreclosure with US does 
we can do it in Canada, but we prefer not to. There are reasons for that. If you are interested, market, it's a brand new course, and there will be some uh, presentation from that I have prepared. It will be interesting because uh, there is some pressure on the market, mortgage rates and stuff. I hope never happens like 90s, but we will have some properties coming under our process, so you should be ready. May 23rd, Wednesday. Okay, I do it once a month. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can stay around me. If not, thanks for coming.